Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through step by step, click by click, how I created Spotify's internet homepage. Well, at least how I would create it if they ever asked me to. Um, but for the purpose of this video, let's pretend they did, okay? So this is a concept build. Um, and we're going to pretend they gave us a brief with some very specific requirements that we need to meet. So while this is a concept, I'm hoping that you'll take some tips and tricks out of this and apply it to your own sites down the road. So let's take a look at the brief, okay? So the first item on the list is that Spotify want to offer their employees a set of useful links on the homepage, okay? Now, most companies do want something like this, but with Spotify, they want two categories of links. They want a set of links, which are I need to links, so request services and things like that. And they also want to provide a set of links to resources, so things like document templates and stuff like that. Now, the kicker to this requirement is they want a lot of links, okay? So they're asking for maybe 20 of each category. So we've got roughly 40 links to stick on the page, which is a challenge if we don't want the page to just be links, okay? So we've got some tricks up our sleeve for that. The next thing they want is they want a section to tell people all about the new things that are happening across the company. So we're talking news feeds here, and they want three of them specifically. They want one for all company corporate news, they want another one for local targeted news, and then they want a third feed, which is all about new roles and opportunities within the company. They also want a section that's gonna promote upcoming key dates and events. And then they wanna provide a link to a news archive or a news center where people can catch up on previous news that's no longer available within the news feeds. Then they wanna promote the core key services across the company. So these are things like their IT, HR, finance, legal departments, etc. So each of them have a site on the internet. They want links to them on this page. And finally, they want an area where they can promote a new benefit they're offering to employees, which is the ability to find tickets for upcoming gigs and events. And to top all that off, they need this site to be branded with Spotify at its core. So we need lots of Spotify green, and you know, as much as we can to make it look Spotify-esque. So like I said, in this video, I'll walk you through exactly how I'd approach this and how I'm gonna build it. We're also gonna dip into Figma where I'm gonna show you how I easily create custom images for the site to make sure we drive the branding through the site. Uh, it's a very simple approach, but very effective. So let's get into it. This video is sponsored well by me and the Academy 365 SharePoint Site Builder Masterclass. This is a course that I put together, which is for anybody who has inherited a SharePoint online site or is building a department site within their internet. The course focuses on the most common requirements that I see again and again, and step-by-step -step how to build them. There's a big focus on user experience within this course, and I've designed it so you don't have to be a techie to take it, right? This is aimed at any business user who wants to up their game within SharePoint. If you're interested, there's a link below along with a tasty discount. Now back to the video. So the starting point for this is we have our blank Spotify, the green room SharePoint site. Okay, so absolutely nothing here. And we know we wanna take this and we wanna turn it into something that looks like this. The first thing that I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the color team that's gonna give us this nice Spotify green uh, in various places throughout the site. So to do that, you wanna to come to the Fluent UI Team Designer, link below. And in here, we're going to add in our colors so we want a spotify green and we want the kind of a spotify black color so that's these colors here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the hex code for my green copy it back over to my fluent team designer i'm going to paste that in here then i'll grab the text color take that bring it in here so that gives me the colors that i want i'm going to come up here to export team click the powershell option select all of this and now we're ready to use our powershell script to create this and add it to the site so here in the SharePoint online management shell, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say team palette equals, and I'm gonna paste in that code here. Say paste anyway. That's loaded in the color palette. And then we just need to assign that to a new template. Pop in this script here and I'll say enter. And now we have that created on our site. So we have a new palette with these colors called the green room ready and available on our site. So pop it back into our site. I'm gonna hit the cog. I'm gonna say change the look. I'm going to say team and now we have the green room Spotify that's the one we created select it and click save so we can see here that our footer has turned to green so we know the green is there and ready to rock now let's look at what we want to do next so we can start structuring out this page so in here as I mentioned earlier we have a top section here which is our I need to links and then we have some resource links but our requirements stated that we were going to need a lot of quick links in various categories right and my solution to that is really to say these are the most common ones that we want to have here but there are more tools and resources available in this kind of toolbox area so you click the down arrow and then we have all of these items in here which I think is a pretty nice solution quite often people 
ask for these quick links and sometimes there's a bit of a bum fight uh, to see what links go in there um, and it can be a bit of a debate but I think this is a nice way around it we can put as much as we want in here really because we let people expand and collapse it whenever they want to see it so we might look at building this section first so we'll come back to our site stick it into edit mode and this is really made up of two sections okay so our first section is going to be split half and half so we get this side here and this side here and what we'll do is we'll add in a quick links web part and we'll just add in some dummy links for the moment so i'm going to say add link and i'm going to say just pick the home page for now click insert and we'll say the first one is create a service desk ticket and what we might do is we might give it an icon so we'll go to library click change and I know if I type in headset, I get this kind of icon in here, which I'll take, select, and now we have that in there. We're using the compact layout for this because it tends to stand out nicely on a background. So let's add in a few more here just so we have something to play with. So we have our links in here, okay? That looks like this. We can see in here we have this I need to, okay? And we could always add this in as the web part title, but I want it a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna put it in myself. So what I'm gonna do is above here, I'm gonna say add web part, I'm gonna say text, and in here I'm gonna say I need to, okay? And I have that little arrow in there, so I add that in by using emojis. This is my emoji picker here. I'm gonna pick this fella here, and that looks good like that. What I'll do is I'll make this a heading because I wanted that very strong bold. So I'm gonna say heading four, I'm gonna make it a bold, and I might increase it to 24. And here we have it over here. So I'm just gonna duplicate it for now so we get the effect. So I'm gonna copy this fella here. I'm gonna move this over here. Copy this fella here and move it over here. We'll just change the name of this to resources. Okay, so that looks pretty good here, but let's change the background to this dark color. Now our primary team gives us this color here. So we don't actually have a dark background color, but we have a little cheat we can do on that, right? So we have these new background options in here. So what we could do is we could select any of them. We might pick this fella here, which gives us a kind of a dark look. And because we've picked the dark one, right? It's made our icons here, the background, that primary green color, which is great. But I don't really like this texture in here. So what you can do is you can say your overlay color, you have an option of white or black, and then you can change the opacity. So I'm gonna pick the black. I'm gonna bring the opacity right up. So we effectively get a black background without having the option here available initially. So that's pretty good, okay? So they'd be our most common links in here. And again, you can use audience targeting and things like that if you wanna make these links specific to any group. If you wanted to do that, you just select the web part, enable audience targeting. And that means I can come to a link in here, I can edit and I can specify the audience that this link appears for which is a nice handy option, okay? But for now, we leave it as is. So what I want to do now is I want to add in that kind of toolbox thing where we have this expandable, collapsible, uh, additional resource section. So what I'll do is I'll add in another section here. And again, we'll do two columns, columns, columns. I don't know why I say columns. I always say column in my personal life. So what we'll do is, again, to make this a bit quicker, what we'll do is we'll copy this and we'll drag it down into this section here. And we'll just duplicate it a few times. And again, copy everything and bring it across. Okay, so we have this additional section in here. Let's change the background to make it look like the other one. So again, we'll pick this one, and we'll bring the opacity right up. And what we'll also do is in this section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this section collapsible. So we're gonna say, stick it on. And by default, we want the collapse, which is fine. And then we can give it a name, which is gonna be more tools and resources. And just to be consistent, we'll add in our little arrow again. And now we can just give these titles. So I'm gonna call this category one. Again, I'll just use a little emoji. Any tricks you have up your sleeve to make things stand out is always nice. So we'll republish that and see how it looks. We have the section here, we have the drop down here, and then we have all this good stuff in here available on demand if we want it. Now I might make a couple of changes to that. First one being, I don't like the alignment here where this is here and then this is stepped in here. So we do actually have an option to move this chevron over to the right hand side, so we'll certainly do that. And if I click this down, this is a little bit overwhelming for me in my simple head. So what I might do is I might add in some space between these categories just to give it a little bit of room to breathe. So I'm gonna say edit, select the section. So let's take care of that chevron first. So we have this expand collapse icon alignment. It's to the left, but we're gonna change it to the right. And that just soothes my soul that this is more aligned, which is good. I'll drop this down. And what I want to do is in between any two categories, I'm gonna say add a web part and I'm gonna stick in a spacer. Now we can reduce that space by dragging this up, but I definitely want to have a bit of space in there. So I'll copy this, and then I'll move it down in between each web part. So 
copy again, bring it over here so we keep everything nice and aligned, duplicate it, and then bring it down here. And then we can republish. And now we have something that feels a little bit more spaced out and a little bit nicer. So we have that there, so that's a great start to our page. So let's look at what we might want to do next. And actually just looking at my example here, I have actually chosen a different background. So let's come back in here, okay? So this is a bit of trial and error playing around with, right? So the background that I had there was a little bit more green. So we might take something like this fella here, this green leaf surface. And again, using our black overlay, we might just increase it. But so we have a little bit more green in it, I suppose you'd say. So you can see the contrast between these two. So that's at say 88% opacity there. So I'll do the same for this fella. Change it to this green and bring this right up to 88 thereabouts. Perfect. I think that looks a little bit nicer. So we'll republish. So what do you want to do? So next on the page, we have this what's happening section. So this I suppose is like the newspaper front page that you have on your site. And what we have is we have three different feeds as per our requirements. So we have an all company news feed. So the idea behind this is, this is news that's relevant to everybody within the company. Then we have local news. So this would be your audience targeted news. So this is news that's specific to a location or a region. Um, and we have two articles in here. And then we have an opportunity section. So that might be for you know open roles across the organization. So three separate feeds with the most recent two news posts displayed. Okay, so we'll stick that in. And then we also have upcoming key dates. So again, this is going to be events posted uh, on this site, but of course you could aggregate from multiple sites. So we have a feed here. And then we have a link here to visit the news hub. So the idea behind the news hub is that, you know, this is the homepage. So we can put some news on it, but in this example, we're not going to fill it with news, okay? Because, you know, there wouldn't be a lot of room for much else. So we show people the very latest of what's happening, but give them the option to go to a news hub. And a news hub could just be another site page where you're just going to display a lot more articles from each feed. So that's typically how we do it. So we give that option here, but we wrap everything in this section background color. So it feels like this is one area within the page. So all very straightforward enough. So we have this, what's happening? We are a big company with a lot going on. So basically we have a section header and we have a tagline, something like that. So what we'll do is we'll come in here, back into edit mode, and we want a one column section here. So I'll come in here, add my text, and we'll just type in what's happening. And what we'll do is we'll make this a heading two, for example, and we want to make an impression. So we might bump it up to maybe 42, something big like that. We'll center align it. That looks good. Hit return and then say we are a big company with a lot owing, no, going on. And then we can be a little bit more reserved with this. So let's drop this down to say our 18 in here or maybe 20. And you know what? Let's actually make this fella as big as we can. 68, huge, lovely, I like it. Okay, so what we want to do then is we have a little line going underneath it. So what we'll do is we'll add in a divider. So we come back in here, we're gonna get something that looks like this, okay? So if you can see here, we have this background in here, which is this green color, which is pretty nice. But the way I would do that is I would come in here, we're gonna edit the section, and I'm gonna pick this color here, okay? Now this is a little bit strong for me, but again, this is where we can use our overlay. So I'm gonna select the white one, and I'm gonna increase it. So we might increase it to 50%. So that gives us this section here. So then we want to add in our news feeds, but to do that, we want a tree column section. So I have this section here that's currently two, change it to tree, and now I can add in my news feeds. So we have this kind of a concept going where we have these titles with this little arrow in here. Um, and the arrow here is white just because that's all that's available to us when we have this dark background. But when we come down here, we can actually make it that green color. Just these little accents that make it uh, pop on the page and make it Spotify-esque, let's say. So we'll come in here, we're gonna add in a text web part. We'll add in our arrow and we're gonna say all company. Come in here, make it a heading again. And I always make these headings, right? Because you just get a stronger bold than you would if it was normal text. That's really why I'm doing it. And I'm not using the web part title because that won't let me um, change the color of individual characters within it. So we'll do it like this. And I drop down here, I can pick my Spotify green color and then that looks nice on the page. And then we can just increase this maybe to something like 24. So we'll copy this, bring it across here. So we have our all company, we'll have our local news, copy once more for our opportunities. And then we just have to add in the news itself. So I'm gonna say, well, let me get rid of this fella. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna look for the news web part, stick it in. Now I have no news published on this site, right? Cause it's brand new. So I'm gonna add in some news articles and then I will show you how I separate them into separate posts.
So I've created my news articles on the site, um, but I've not added any metadata to them. So they all just come in here as standard news articles that will appear in the web part. So let's change that. Let's separate these things out into the different feeds, right? Now, a simple way to do that if you're publishing news on this site, right, is to come into your site pages library. We'll change this to all pages. So we have all of these news articles in here and our homepage. That's all that's on this site. So if we want to be able to target these with some metadata, and this is the simplest way to do this. If you're aggregating from multiple sites, you'll want to use some maybe managed metadata and add it into the search schema. But we won't worry about that for now. Let's just deal with the local situation here. So we're going to say add column. We're going to say choice. I'm going to say next. And I'm going to say page type. Now we can specify the different types. So we know we have all company. We know we have local. We know we have opportunities. And let's add in one more called, say, general, just for other site pages. I'm going to say save. Now that means we can come in here. So we know our new head of security and intranet admin want it. They are going to be, so we'll click the little icon here. And we're going to say page type is opportunity. I'll click save. When you make a change to a page in here, you always need to publish it again. So that little yellow book icon means it's not published. So while they're both selected, I'll say publish. That means the metadata is actually applied. Now we have our local. So we're going to say heated seats in toilets, which is a serious benefit there. Uh, so we'll select these two here. And again, we'll go to page type and we're going to say these are local news. And again, we'll publish. Now the local news, again, you know, that the idea behind that is go it's going to be audience targeted, right? So you'd enable audience targeting on the site um, and in this library, and then you'd be able to specify the audience. And then we have our all company. So meet the new CEO and the company results are in. So again, we'll hit our information. We're going to say the page type for these two are all company. And then we'll click save. We'll republish, which is great. And then the last one is our home. It is not necessary, but I'm just trying to keep things tidy here. So we'll say page type again for here is going to be general. Let's say there and then we'll just publish this fella. So now that you've done this little bit of homework, you can come back to home and we'll click the page into edit mode. So I can come to my news web part here. And what I can do is I get the information. I'm going to say the news source is this site. Um, and now I can go to filter and I can say page properties. I can select a property, which is page type, which is the one we created. And I say in this one, I only want to show things that have been tagged as all company. That'll give us our two stories in here. Um, so some changes I might make to this web part while I'm here is I'm going to show only two at the moment. So if I change this to list, drop this down to two. So I'll only ever show the most recent two in here. I'm going to hide the title and commands because we've created our own custom title here. And within here, okay, so you can see here, we're only seeing a tiny little bit of the description of our news post, okay? Um, so if you turn off all these guys in here, you toggle them off, you're going to see a bit more. So when I click save, you'll see that now in a sec. So if I say republish, you can see we see much more of the description of the news article. So sometimes it's important to show published date and who published, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes I favor seeing more of a description than anything else. So in this case, I'll do that. So now we just do the same for our other news feeds. So I'm going to copy this one and drag it over here. And now it's just minor changes to this, right? So we're changing the filter essentially. So where that one was all company, we want to change this one to local. Copy it once more, bring it over here. And for this one, we want to show our opportunities. Page type and equals opportunity. So we have that in there, which looks good, but we want to match the background, okay? So again, we'll select this, we'll pick this new fancy green looking fella, we'll say a white overlay and we'll bring it up to our 50%, that's what we used. And now that matches in quite nicely. And the last thing we want to do, if we look over here, now we want to add in our upcoming key dates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in one more section yet again, one column. We'll change the background while we're here. Bring that up to 50. And now we just need to add in the events web part. We'll change this from film strip to compact. We'll grab one of our titles we created up here and we'll drag it down just so we don't have to do all that formatting again. We'll call this one key dates. But this is looking for events on the site. I've not created any on this site, so I'm just going to say all sites because if events published on other sites, so we'll just use that for example. I'll change this to only show four, but obviously show as many as you want really here. And everything else on that is fine. And the last thing we want to do is we want to add in this link to visit our news hub. So we'll stick in the little divider line here, stick it in. And then below that, we're going to look for our button. Now it's going to ask for a URL. So we're just going to stick in the URL to this page here. But obviously you'd update that to the actual destination. We'll say visit the news center, up in a link. 
center align the button so it looks nice there and we'll click republish so now we have our what's happening section which is looking pretty nice what i might do and i haven't actually done it here but i'll stick it in here is i like to add a little bit of space between these sections so not everything looks like it's on top of each other so i'll say edit and then i'll just come in here below this i'll add in the spacer web part and i'll obviously reduce down a little bit but we'll just add that extra little bit of space so we come in here if i zoom out a little bit we have this section here which is coming together nicely so next we have this area here which is our shared service so this is where you're going to promote the kind of shared service sites within your internet hr it finance legal marketing operations the usual kind of suspects um, so it's nice to give it this little bit of a section here and I'll show you how I created these custom images really easy in Figma so you can do something similar. So to create this section is actually relatively easy, right? We really only have a text web part, text web part, and then a quick links web part, okay? So let's add the few bits here and then I'll show you how to create these images. So back to our area here. So the structure of this section is, well, let's go into edit mode and we'll come down here and the structure is really, we want this one third left, okay? Um, and we'll also want a one column on top. So we'll stick our header in here, our little description here, and then all our links will be here. So let's add in the text here, which is gonna be assured services. Get it here, I'll make it my H4, let's say, and then bring it right up to 68, because I'm crazy like that. Um, we'll put it in and then that's cool. And then we'll come in here and we want this kind of a thing in here. I'm just gonna copy it come in here text web part pop it in like that so again this is going to be our heading for size 32 we already looked at how we get our little green arrow there and then, then this is just normal text size 18 okay so that'll take care of that put in whatever you want come over here we're going to add in the quick links web part and the layout we use for this one is going to be grid which gives us this kind of thing and that lets us add a link add a, a title really for the link and add the background image so that's where we're going to add them all in so let's add in a few fake ones now and then we'll do the image part say add link i'm just going to put in fake links to my home page just to start this out so we'll call this one human resources just like that you want to add in another one say add link again continue on i'll add in the rest here and we'll come back to it okay so i've added them in here like this now if you want to change the order of any of these here you can just click one of them click the move bring it over to where you want so i want hr i'll probably have it next I'll bring over finance to here eagle over here and then finally operations will bring it to the end okay so we have that here this is looking pretty good now we want to get them images in here so we'll jump over to figma and i'll show you exactly how i do it but it's really good to be able to to create your own images when you need them um because it can really put the branding onto your site and it's very simple to do basically you don't need to be a graphic designer to do these kinds of things quick one I'm just editing this video here and I realized that some people who've not watched any of my previous videos they might know what Figma is or how to get set up with Figma um, I've covered it in previous videos so I'll put a link to them up here or it'll be down below um, I'll call it out clearly um, but have a look at them and you'll see how you can get started with Figma and then you can come back in here and then follow exactly what I'm doing okay back to the video so over in figma i've created a tile essentially for each of the shared services and it consists really of a rectangle with a icon on top and we can do a little bit of styling to the icon to give it this neon kind of a look so top tip well for me anyway because i use it all the time right icons are fantastic right they tend to look nice and they can convey a message subtly but you know essentially they're going to give you that little bit of eye candy um, so it's good to have a good icon resource available at your fingertips one that i use all the time is this one in here it's called icon sax 6000 icons which is plenty right so we've got a massive library of icons and they're all categorized so you can come in here pick whatever one you want add it to your design and you can change the colors and everything on them they're really good i'll put a link to this icon library so essentially you can can search for it within Figma and then you can open it and then it's yours to use however you want so it's super cool like that so having a good set of icons is really handy like I said I use them all the time and this one is particularly nice so all you want to do really is you want to pick an icon that suits it's going to be abstract right but kind of suits what you're looking to say so human resources for me was this person so let's create this one right well the first thing you want to do is we want to create a canvas right so i have this one here and it's 1080 by 719 okay that's what i'm going for here so i'll come up here to this fella here i'm going to say a frame and i'm going to put it in here you can draw it roughly because you can always type in the values right so our frame is 1080 that's grand so and we want it to be 720 right so selecting the frame over here and you can type in 720 
So we just want to add the background color in here, okay? So select the frame itself, and then over on the right hand side, you're going to see fill. So select the color and just drag that down to bottom left corner, say for example, and that will give you your black color. So now we have that, and now we just need to grab our icon. So I'll come over into my icon sack 6000 icon six styles and i just want to choose an icon that will kind of work right now i've been here a lot right so i know there's a section called users with a whole range of different user icons so i can just pick whichever one that works so we might pick this one here for example so i just select it and i'm going to copy it come over here select my frame and paste it came in here really small right so what i might do is i might hover over one of these corners here hold shift and then drag it out to make it a nice bit bigger okay and I can move it in here these guys will help to keep you centered which is good then we want to change some things about this icon right now for this specific icon family when I drag it in you'll see over here in my frame I have this item in here in this kind of purple so what I want to do is I want to drop that down drop it down again so we actually get the user in the octagon and I'm actually going to select that and drag it up here because that's the bit that we want all of this other stuff is well, it's a long story, but we basically don't need it, right? So I'm gonna get rid of that. And now we just have this user octagon that we can influence and change fairly easy over on the right-hand side with just selecting it, right? So I'm gonna increase the stroke on this. The stroke is basically how thick the line is in the icon, right? So we can increase that, say, bring it up to 10.5. Like that's what I'm gonna go for anyway. And now it's hard to see, right? So what we're gonna do is over here, again, where we increase the thickness of our line, we can go to selection colors, and I'm gonna make that green. So now we have this kind of Spotify green color. Uh, and what we might do is we might select it and we might hold shift and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we could go with this, but adding a, an extra little bit of flair is gonna be adding in this kind of neon effect. So to do that, it's super simple, right? Select your icon here. So what you want to do is copy and paste it. Okay, so now we have two of them. So we wanna select the one that's below the top one. And we wanna to go to effects, drop that down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say layer blur, okay? And we're going to increase the layer blur let's say 40 okay so you can see we get that kind of a look behind it now if you want to make it more extreme select the one you you just had there with your layer blur and then copy and paste it again and you're going to get something like that which is quite neon looking okay so when you've got that done you're pretty good i'm just going to double click the frame name and i'm going to call it hr1 and now when you have that in here select it click export and then you can save it as a png anywhere on your computer or laptop and then it's ready to upload into our site so i'm going to say export hr1 hr1 is fine as a name and i'm going to click save so now i've got that saved and it's ready to go so all you want to do is repeat that exercise right for how many links you're going to need and the handiest way to do it is going to be you're going to select the one you just did you're going to hold down alt shift drag to the right and we've got a copy and now it's a case of just deleting out the icons and then you come back to your icon finder pick your next icon Let's say we'll pick this one, for example. Okay, back over to where you're doing all this stuff. Click that, HR1, pop it in there. And then it's the same, okay? Over here where we have the purple, drop it down, drop it down. Pick the 3D cube, bring it up here. Delete all that messing. Select it, resize it, change the color to green so you can actually see it. We'll increase the size to 10.5. Select it, and then just use the guides to help you center it. Copy, paste, add in our effect, which is gonna be our layer blur. Click this little sun icon here, bring it to 40, is the blur, and we want to double that up again. So we're gonna select the blurred one, copy and paste, and we get that in there. So like I said, repeat that exercise for all your icons. When you've got that done, come back to your SharePoint site, select each of them, and then you can just click the little pencil here. We're gonna use a custom image change and this is where you can go to upload then i'm going to pick the one i exported which is our hr1 i'm going to say open we get it like that add image sorry the buttons are a little bit cut off here on the screen recording put it in and now we have our human resources in there like that so it takes longer for me to explain it than it does for you to actually do it right but being able to create these branded icons is super useful in any internet and you can see it's quite easy the key is getting that library of icons to play with um, or indeed your your own organization might have their own branded icons you can certainly use them as well so i'm going to add in some icons for the rest of these lads here and i'll come back in two seconds so that's them all added there so now we'll just click republish and see what it looks like so now we have this nice our shared services area with these links to the different sites we'd have on our internet so our page is coming together nicely we have this nice section here we have what's happening and then we have our shared services 
So back over to our example or demo site, the last thing we have on this page is this kind of advertisement, okay? So this might be to any other kind of resource where you just wanna draw specific attention to it. Now there's many ways you could do this. I chose to do it as a custom image just because I wanted to make something look really nice on the page. Now pretty soon we're gonna get the ability to add an image background rather than the default ones that SharePoint has given us. So for example, if I edit this, at the moment, we can have these background options here, which are preset, but we know that what's coming is the ability to add our own image. So when that does come, we'll be able to do this a little bit easier. But for now, we create it as a custom image. And again, we'll use Figma for this. And again, it's very simple to do. So I'll give you an example of it and you'll be able to use that then and create your own if you want to do that. Effectively, it's gonna be an image and the image will act as a link. So we'll make it look like there's a button here, but really the whole image is clickable. So let's go over to Figma and I'll show you how I usually create these kinds of things. So here's the one I created here called Tickets. So we'll create it now from scratch. So we're gonna create a canvas or a frame, bring it in here, just drag it out. And I'll show you the dimensions I have now. So for the one I created, the width is 2560 and the height is 578. So I'll select the frame I just created. I'm gonna say 578. So we wanna add the background to this, okay? Now a good resource for finding royalty-free images that you can use, okay, is this site here called Unsplash. So good high quality images and you're free to use them however you want. So I'm gonna type in concert just to give us that kind of a, an image. So we could pick any of these. I actually picked this one, so let's select it. So I'm gonna right click, copy image, back into Figma, select our frame and we're gonna paste our image. So that brings it in here like this within the frame. So now I'm just gonna resize this image so it looks good within the frame and I'll drag it up, something like that. So now we need to take this image and turn it into a Spotify looking image. So what I will do is I will have my frame here. I'm gonna draw a rectangle on top of it. I'm just gonna move it so it covers the whole image. I'm gonna select the fill of this. And I'm gonna change it again to my Spotify green. So I'm gonna select my rectangle. Now make sure you're only selecting the rectangle, okay? So I've got my rectangle. So we see here, I've got under layer, I've got pass through. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna change that to color. So that will make the image the Spotify green color. Give it that hue anyway. But what I also want to do is I wanna darken it a bit. What we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna add in another rectangle, bring it into place. And when we've got our rectangle selected, we're gonna to go to fill. There's an option up here for gradient. I'm gonna select that. When we have a gradient, we're allowed to select the color and its opacity. So if it's see-through or not. So at the moment, none of these are see-through. So we have the gray color on the left and a slightly darker one on the right, but they're both at 100%, okay? But if I drop one of them to 0%, you can see that that one is see-through. So we'll get the other one on this side that's not see-through, so it's at 100. Select the color, bring this down to black. We'll add in actually another area in here. So just click anywhere here. And this one will make this zero as well. And then the one that we have on the far side, which is this one here, we'll change it to black and we'll increase that to 100. And actually we'll set the color of this one to black as well. So we've got all the colors are black, right? We've got one, two, and three. Okay, so we make this one fully black. This one is fully see-through and black. And this one is fully black over this side. So we get this kind of look. And you can always reposition this thing by sliding it along to bring it to the middle. So a bit complicated to explain, but just have a play around with this and you'll get it straight away. So now we have our background ready to go, but we want to add in this stuff in here, okay? So I'll come up here and I'll just select a rectangle, draw it into place here. So we're adding this in so we can see the text that we put on top of it. So I'm gonna select that, and select fill, bring it to black, and then I'm just gonna bring this slider down to reduce the opacity on it, something like that, which is good. And now I can just add in my text. So I'm gonna say text up here, Click anywhere here. We're gonna say looking for tickets. Okay, so I can select this, bring it roughly into place here. I'll set it to center aligned, and then I'm gonna drop font size down a bit, something like that, okay? And now we're nearly there, right? We're getting there. So all we want to do is create this kind of button looking thing here. So very easy to do that. We'll come up to our rectangle. We'll just draw it roughly for the minute. So draw it out like that. Over on the right hand side up here, we have this radius corners. So I'll increase that, maybe something like 19. Just makes it look a little bit more like a button, doesn't it? Um, so we have that and I'm gonna change the fill color of my button to white, which looks good. And now we just wanna add the text on top of it that says ticket finder. So I'm gonna select this text here, copy and paste it, bring it down here. Um, and over in our layers panel on the left, I can see my rectangle is my button and the text is below it. So we wanna bring that on top. We'll change the color of our text to black. And now it's obviously way too big, right? So we'll come over here to our font size 
and we'll drop that right down so it fits in our button. Double click the text and we'll just change it to Ticket Finder. Bring it slightly over to the left and we want to get a little icon in here. So again, this is where our icon family comes into play. So I'll zoom out and I know there's a section in here called arrows. So we're going to select one of them and we'll pick this fella. So copy it back in here. I'll just select the button, paste, and it brings it in here. Drag it over to our button area here. It's too small, but we'll do the same thing we did before. So we can see it over here when I've selected it. Drop that down, drop it again, and we say arrow circle right. Click that and drag it back to the top. And now what we'll do is we'll just make the size of it a bit bigger, bring it into position a bit more, and we'll increase the stroke of it. So that's how thick the lines are. Say 3.5, and we'll change the color to our green, which looks pretty nice. And now it's a case of just playing around with the position of all of this. So that looks fine and fine, but the button is maybe a bit too big. So I'll select here. And if you hold Alt, it'll, you know, move it equally top and bottom. And the same if I do it here, bring it in and it'll decrease it. So that's good. So now we can just move this into place. So if you've got a load of items together that you want to move as one, the handiest way to do it is select your text, hold Shift, select your icon, hold, keep holding Shift and select the button background and then right click and you can say group selection. So that'll act as one, one group that you can move around. So let's get a bit of perspective, zoom out a little bit. So the position of these is all off. So you can always do, right? When you've got things inside a frame, which we have here, I can select an item and I can come up here to the alignment and I can say center. So that's gonna move it to the center. I'll do the same for tickets, move it to the center and the same for our button as well move it to center. So now we know that's all in the center of our image, which is great. The last thing to do here, well, what I've done anyway, is add a little icon up here. So again, back to our icon family. And I know there's a section here called essential, which is all the random kind of icons. And we actually have a Spotify icon here, would you believe? Um, so what I'll do is I'll copy it back in here and I will paste it. Okay. Now this sometimes pastes in in random areas. So just keep an eye for where it comes in. So it came here, so I'll select it. I'll bring it up to here. And again, I drop this down and I have my Wi-Fi square. So I'll drag that up, delete this stuff here, come in I select that and I will hold it. Shift, Alt, size it to what I want. And then again, I will increase the strokes of the line thickness, something like 4.5, change it to white. So we have it like this. Um, the great thing about this particular icon set is I can select it, okay? And I'm over here in Wi-Fi, I can drop that down and I can actually change individual items within it. So I can see there's all these different elements that make up this icon. If I click in this group here, I can see that's selecting these little, I don't know, Wi-Fi symbol things. So I can change the color of them individually by going over to stroke. I can change that to green. And now we have something that looks like this. So this looks pretty cool. I'll select a frame here just to give it a name and I'll call it ticket banner image enter and now what we'll do when we've selected our ticket banner image over to export click export ticket banner image and we'll just save it so now we've the image created again back over to our sharepoint site and what we're going to do is we're going to say edit come down here and what we're going to do is we're going to add in another section and this section is going to be a full width section it was right across the page and that will allow us to put in an image we're going to upload our image which is our ticket banner image click open and then add image so that gives us this cool looking thing at the bottom of our page where it looks nice and custom. So we're gonna click the edit web part for our image and then we can just put in a link. I'm just gonna put in a link to this home page of the site and we click republish. And then we have this cool full width area on the bottom and I can hover over it and click and it'll take me to wherever I wanted it to go. So that's it for our on-page content. I think it's looking quite well. Zoom out a bit just so we can see here on a bigger screen, it would look quite nice like this. So we have that all in here, that's great. So the last things then really to do is to look at our header section um, and we'll add the branding to that and we'll add the icons and that kind of stuff. Okay, so looking at the header section, the way this is structured here, okay, is if we go to the cog and we go to change the look and I come into header, what I've done basically is I've selected the extended header layout, which will give me this nice big space here to play with. For the team background, I've actually chosen this gray color here um, because we're gonna add in a image background up here anyway, right? So that'll take care of the green, but I wanted this gray color here for where the menu is gonna be for the background. Um, and then we come down here, we have a site logo thumbnail, which is gonna be this fella on its own. 
and then we have a site logo which is going to be the icon with the name the green room here um, and this is optional but I stick it in here rather than just showing the site title because I want a, a bigger bolder font than SharePoint will give me out of the box so that's really all we need to do so the assets we need to get ready for this is obviously we need this logo on its own and then we need the logo with the name and we need a background image okay now you don't have to use the background image like I have here. This is a very slight gradient here where it's darker green here and lighter green over here. If you didn't want to go through the effort, you could change it to the team primary color and it will give you just, um, if I remove this for a minute, it'll just give you that flat green color, but you'll also get the green where your menu is. Now the contrast between the white text and the green background isn't great for me. So that's why I chose the gray and then I stick in the background image myself. Okay, so let's get the assets ready and then we'll upload them and you'll see exactly how I do it. So again, back into Figma. So I guess by now you're starting to see that Figma is um, an essential tool for me in how I brand and build internet sites. I use it all the time to shoehorn in the branding and make it look nice. And you know, I know in explaining it, it might seem that it's complicated, but once you go through this exercise once, you'll know how to do it exactly. And there is no substitute for hands-on, just getting stuck in and doing it. It's quite simple when you get there. So to create our background image, okay, the the size that we're going to use for it is 2560 by 164 and that's the dimensions that Microsoft give us if you if you look it up so let's create a new frame again again give it any size but we want to make it 2560 by 164 so 2560 by 164 okay and now all we need to do is add a gradient to it so I'll select the frame and under fill I'm going to pick the gradient so that gives me this gradient here and all I'll do is I'll select one of these items in here to change the color and I'll make that the green and then I'll pick the one on the far side and I'll make that also green but I'll just pull this slider down a little bit so it gets a little bit darker so we have a very subtle gradient left to right okay so that's fine so I will just give it a name and I'll say header bg1 Okay, so that takes care of that. Now we have the site logo. So you'll probably have one of these for your company already, okay? I got this one off the net for Spotify. So all I do is I get the icon, bring it in here, and then I'm gonna export it. I'm gonna say site thumbnail, which is fine. I'm gonna click save. And then when you wanna create the, the bit that has the text of the site name, basically you just get your, well, let's just do it, right? So I'm gonna select this here, copy, paste it. Okay, so we have this icon here and I'm just gonna have some text beside it and we're gonna call it the green room. Okay, so get it roughly the way you want. Now we're obviously gonna have this on top of our green background here. So I'm gonna change the color of this to white, something like that. So select this, shift, select your icon. Okay, right click and then say frame selection. Okay, so now this is a frame. So when we export it, it'll export it as just a single image and we'll say this is site logo. So we have that selected. I'm gonna say export, save, bring it like that. And now we can come back to our site and actually update this. So I'm gonna to go to the cog. I'm gonna say change the look header. I'm gonna say extended layout. I'm gonna choose this gray here. I'm gonna say upload an image, header BG1. Open, brilliant, that brings it in there. Turn off site title visibility because we now have that within our logo. So I'm gonna to come to site logo here. I'm gonna say change. Put that in there it comes in nice like that and what i will do is i will center the logo alignment put it in, in there and the site logo thumbnail again change select this open we have it in there and now we can click save so we have that in there now we have the logo up here but if i scroll down we can see that the thumbnail then comes into play there so it looks nice that's why we have the two separate ones and if we want to get uber fancy we might come to the cog again change the look and in our footer we can add a footer logo. So I'll say change. And again, I'll just use the site thumbnail again. That just means that we have it down in the footer section down here. Now I know you can't really see that there. Let me just pull that up a little bit. There you go. So we have it down there. So you've got super branding all over the place. And that's it. So there you have it. That's how I'd approach this set of requirements with the branding to a new SharePoint internet homepage. Hopefully you've picked up some tips along the way and you've learned something new, whether it be some of the SharePoint stuff or some of the Figma stuff. And um, for me, those two skill sets are becoming more and more aligned as time goes on. I can't remember the last time I approached an internet or SharePoint project without doing something in Figma. Um, so I'm hoping this video along with some of my previous videos are starting to open that door for some of you guys as well. So if you got something out of the video, you know the usual, please like and subscribe. So until next time, see ya.